Uh, my name is Ke, and I'm from University of Pennsylvania. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about a topic that I believe most of you have known this, or probably in the last minute, before you enter this conference room for this session, you have seen that. And yes, uh, I'm going to talk about the online advertisement. So today I will be presenting adX, which is a fast, private, and accountable ad exchange infrastructure. So now let's take a look at the current advertising architecture. Will a user visit a pu content publisher's website, such as the New York Times? Your browser will download an HTML page, and there will be some JavaScript code embedded inside. This JavaScript code will generate a request for an ad tag to a seller who wants to sell the ad slot of you to the ad exchange entity. The ad exchange entity will then select and invite the potentially interested buyers who want to sell the advertiser's advertisement to you. And we call these buyers as bidders. So the bidders will then generate a bid based on how they will bid for different type of users to join the auction for the ad slot. And then the ad exchange obtain all these bids and run an auction to find out the winner. And finally, it send back the ad tag to the browser. And now the ad is displayed on your screen. Afterwards, the ad exchange also needs to charge the winner for the price based on the specific auction mechanism it used. The current exchange system is running as a black box, so it makes it hard for the outsiders to understand what is happening inside. And indeed, this non-transparency brings some issues to the ad exchange companies. For example, at the beginning of this year, the Justice Department has sued Google for manipulating the auction mechanisms. And even earlier back to 2021, uh, the Wall Street Journal also stated that Google used some insider knowledge of the past bids submitted by the advertisers to gain some unfair advantages. So as a customer of their products or the parties in this system, or the regulators, we cannot say for sure whether these claims are true or not. But this will make us start thinking about whether these ad exchange companies are really trustworthy as before, we think. So the reason for this distrust of the current ad exchange is the reason lies in the fact that the ad exchange is running many important functionalities and connecting different parties in the system. So if it tries to abuse its position, then there are some malicious attacks can be launched by the ad exchange. So we can first see an example here. Here we have two bidders who want to compete for an ad slot for a very high qualified user. So actually, the first bidder wins this auction, so he's a real winner. However, the malicious ad exchange can simply make the colluding losing bidder the winner. So the high qualified user will only be able to see the advertisement from the colluding bidder. Also, the ad exchange can make profits by doing that. So in this example, suppose that we use the second price auction mechanism, where the winner only needs to pay the second highest bid among all the bids submitted. So in reality, the winner only needs to pay $1 for the displacement. But the ad exchange can simply charge it more for, say, $2. And then the buyers will have to pay this price. And the issue is that it cannot be even aware of this issue. So even though the ad exchange will not behave during all these processes, it still gains much information about all the bidder speeds. But as, as an ad exchange, it's running millions of different auctions for different type of users. So what a malicious ad exchange can do is that I will simply tell my colluding bidders how your competitors bid for different type of users in different auctions. So next time, the bidders will be smart enough to say that I will use this additional information to adjust how I will bid to win in this game. So the crux of the distrust lies in two aspects. So the first one is that we don't have any way to prove that the ad exchanges do conduct the auctions correctly. And also, the ad exchange have no way to prove that they are not misusing the additional bid information that they received. So in this paper, we propose ADEX, which is a system to provide mechanisms to help the ad exchange companies to build up trust again. So our goal is to first provide the public verifiability for auction. So as an ad exchange company, I can prove to you that we conduct everything, including the auction, correctly. And also, we want to provide the bid privacy for the losing bidders. So anyone who loses in this auction, the bid value will not be learned by the ad exchange. So their ad exchange have no way to misuse this additional information. 
And besides these two points, we also want to make our system practical for the real-time bidding, which typically requires the auction to be finished within hundreds of milliseconds. And also, we don't want to require the current Alex Chain companies to deploy too many computing resources to provide the verifiability and privacy properties. So basically, we want our system to have both low latency and high throughput. So for the rest of the talk, I will first go through the overview system design choice in edX, and then talk about the private auction protocol. And given the time here, I will not go into details about how we can make it verifiable, but just give you some intuitions of how this works. And then finally, we can see some evaluation results for this. So in the ADX system, we still have the ADX change companies and the bidders. We also have a browser with the ADX supported functionalities. So besides these parties, we assume that there will be a public append-only ledger, which we mainly use for storage purposes, where some materials can be write to this public-only ledger, and anyone can get read access from it. So initially in our system, all the bidders will upload the information about itself, including what is a category of the advertisement and what is a type of target users they want to target at. And instead of like the traditional ad exchange system, where the ad exchange will track all the user information and then do the recommendation of advertisement. Here in ADX, we're also compatible with a local tracking algorithm where you can just determine the user interest with your local browsing history. So the browser can determine the user interest locally and then fetch the relevant bidder's information from the public ledger. And then they locally select the potential interest bidders for the auction. So in the previous ad exchange, the bidders will directly submit the bids to the ad exchange. However, our goal here is that the bids should not be learned by the ad exchange companies. So to do that, we need to involve an additional server which actually can be instantiated by the seller's parties. So the bidders will create a bid share of its bid value. So each server here will receive one bid share, and only receiving one share does not reveal anything about the original bid value. So the ad exchange receiving these shares will then run a private auction using these shares and to find out the winner and finally send back the ad tag to the user's browser as before. So afterwards, all the parties who join this auction will upload some materials that is required for the public verification to the ledger. So for any auditors who want to verify an outcome of an auction, it can easily fetch these materials from the public only ledger and do the verification locally without any interaction with the previous parties. So now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the private auction protocol that we specifically designed for this real-time bidding scenario. So in our system, we assume that one of the auction server can deviate the protocol arbitrarily. And of course, we need to assume that the another server is honest and do not collude with it. So we don't need to actually know the honest server. So it can be any one of these two, and we don't need to know which one is honest beforehand. And also, we assume that some bidders can deviate the protocol arbitrarily, but we should still keep a small amount of bidders who will follow our protocol. So before talking about how we make this private, I'm going to go through a non-private auction protocol to give us an intuition, and then we can see how we can make this non-private way into a private method. So here we have three bidders, where they each hold a bid to join the auction. So we assume that there's an upper bound of the maximum possible bid, which is L, and we set L to, this in this, to four in this example. So for each bidder, the first step that they will do is they will create a bid vectors of four elements. So each element is a bid of either zero or one. And then given a bid x, what the bidders will do is that they will set the first x bids to one and the, last bid, uh, the remaining bids to zero. For example, for the first bidder, its bid is three. So the first three entries are set to one and the last one is set to zero. So afterwards, all these bid vectors are submitted to this to auction servers. So actually, the auction servers just directly see these bid vectors in play. And what they want to do is that they will run a bitwise OR operations over each entry. So for the first entry, the servers just simply do the OR operations over the three bits one. So the computing result is one, clearly. And after doing the computation for all the entries, they will obtain a bit vector result, which is 1110. So what does this mean? 
So if we check that the third entry is set to one, this indicates that there is at least bidder, one bidder who set the third entry to one. So basically the maximum bid should be larger than three or equal to three. Also we know that the fourth bid is set to zero. So that tells us that no bidder set the fourth bid to one. So all these maximum bids should be smaller than four. So we combine these two pieces of information and then we can make the conclusion that the maximum bid in this auction is three. Okay. So the next step for us is to find out who actually paid for this price and who is the winner in this auction. So the auction servers can simply check the third entries in the bid vector of each bidder one by one. And they will find out that actually the first bidder set this bid to one. So the bid, first bidder is actually the winner in this auction. So here from this example, we can see that the key challenge that we want to address is how can we privately compute the bitwise OR operations in a very efficient way. So now I will introduce our building block that we use in our paper, which is called a fine aggregatable encodings. We also call it as AFE scheme. So in the AFE scheme, there are n clients where each client holds an input from x1 to xn. And we have a server here who want to compute some statistical results over these inputs. So the aggregate function f here can include sum, average, mean, and max. And of course, the server should do so while the inputs of the clients are hidden from the server. So I will first talk about the AFE scheme with a single server, which does not provide privacy for the client's inputs. But next, we will see how it naturally extends to multiple servers. So in the AFE scheme, the client will first encode its input into an encoding value. And then all these encoding values will be forwarded to the server. So the server obtains all these encoding values in clear. Then the server will just add up these, all these encoding values from different clients to obtain a sum of the encodings. And then it runs a decode function to obtain a statistical result. Okay. So now we want to extend the AFE scheme with multiple servers. So the clients still do the encoding as before. And instead, they add an additional step to create two secret shares, S1 and S2. So the S1 plus S2 will equal the original encoding values. But even if you only see one secret share, it does not reveal anything about the encodings. So each server will only receive one secret share, which does not leak anything about the original value. And then the two servers will do is they locally sum up all the local shares to produce the sum of S1 and sum of S2. And then they will exchange these two sum numbers and sum these numbers together so they obtain the sum of the original encoding values. So they run the decode function, and now we obtain the statistical result. So here, this is the only output to the servers. So the server does not learn anything beyond this output. So another interesting property that I want to address here is that if we go through the process of how the AFE scheme compute everything, we will find that it only uses very cheap computations with a very uh, uh, cheap encode and decode function, and other operations are just additions. So this makes it a perfect fit for us to build a very efficient auction protocol. So now I will finally introduce our AFE scheme for computing the OR operations over bits. So the input space X, of course, is a bit in either zero or one. So the encoding output space E will be an element in ZP. So for ZP, actually, it means the integers from 0 to P minus 1. So to encode an input x, we do as follows. So if the x is 0, then the encoding will re deterministically de return 0. And if the x is bit 1, then we just sam randomly sample an element in ZP and set that as an encoding value. So to decode the sum of all these encodings, this is what we do. So if the sum is 0, then we will return zero. And otherwise, the decoding value is one. So now we will see a tall example for p of five to see why it actually works. So I want to address here that in reality, the p should be large enough so that the decoding will fail with a very negligible probability. And actually, we experimented with a p of one, uh, 192 bits. So we first see an example with three zeros. So they will be all encoded into zeros deterministically. And they are summed together to produce the 
sum i of the encodings. And then we run the decode function, which gives us zero. And actually, the zero here is the three bit of wise over operations over zeros. And next, we see the example with bit one. So we run the encoding function as before, and we sum up all these encodings to produce a sum in Z5. So that's why we need to add a mod five operations after all these additions. And then we run a decode function, which gives us one. And one actually is the result of bitwise all operations over one zero, uh, one bit, and two, uh, two bit one and one bit zero. So now we will see how we can use this AFE scheme to build the private auction protocol. Here the bidders will encode its bit into a bit vector as before. So set the first x entries to one. And then what they will do is that they will encode each bit into an encoding value in Z5. So for the first bit, it will be encoded into a random element in Z5, which is four in this case. And the last element, zero, is encoded into zero deterministically. So each bidder will then create two bit vectors, which are the additive shares of the original encoding vector. So actually they add up together to the original value. For example, here, the two additive shares of zero is three and two, because they add up together and we do the mod five operation will give us zero. Then each share will be sent to one uh, auction server. So each auction server now will have the one secret share of all the bidders. And then they will start to compute the maximum bid. So what they will do is that they sum up the local shares and to produce the sum of its local share vector. And then they exchange these two sum vectors to produce the sum of the original encodings. And we run the decode function, and then we know that this is the maximum bid of three. So after finding out the maximum bid, the next thing that we want to do is to find out the winner. So actually, they just need to set, check which bidder actually set the third entry to one. So we will directly reveal the third entries of all the bidders. And then we summon them together to obtain the original encodings. Then we run the decode function, which gives us 110. So we know that the first bidder is actually the winner. So here is our basic protocol for the ADEX. And we, all, we also have many optimization techniques to make sure that it fits in the requirements for the real-time bidding. So please check out our paper. So I will quickly go through the ideas for how to make this uh, verifiable. So we can see here the private auction only uses additions. So as an auditor who wants to verify whether this process is computed correctly, we just need to verify the additions are, is correct. So for, to do this, we can use a very simple and efficient scheme, which is a Peterson commitment. So please check out the paper for more details again. So I will show some evaluation results for now. The first end, uh, metric that we use is an end-to-end -end latency over wire area network, where the bidders, the auction servers, are split, are split around different regions. So we also build some baselines, use other private computation methods. So here we can see that ADAX can finish the auction within 600 milliseconds, which is enough to support the real-time bidding where the other uh, baselines all take more than 10 seconds or 100 seconds. We also compare that, uh, the throughput with a baseline, which is non-private, so it does not provide any privacy and verifiability. So in this figure, the lower to the right means the throughput is higher. So actually here we can see that ADAX can uh, roughly achieve 40% throughput of a non-private baseline. So in conclusion, here we propose ADAX, which is a fast private and accountable Alex change infrastructure to help the Alex change companies to build up trust again with a public verifiability for auction and the beast privacy. And our evaluation shows the practical ability for real-time bidding. And that's much of my presentation, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you.